Welcome to the GFR Art Gallery. My name is Anna Stewart and I'm the Gallery Manager. Jeffrey Hamp Adams will be joining us today. He was the Gallery's first curator and he's going to share some of his knowledge about the Ron Belling Aviation Collection that has been housed at the Gallery since 2000. As a result of an article published in the Eastern Province Herald stating that the collection was about to be sold and shipped off to Germany, it became a cause of concern to the Gucci family that this would have resulted in artworks of an historical note to be irretrievably lost. With the acquisition of the collection in 1997, the family undertook to set up the facility and exhibition as it is today. This beautiful gallery, with its internationally renowned aviation art, is open to all communities in Port Elizabeth and aviation buffs and enthusiasts worldwide. Good morning, Jeffrey. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's lovely having you here at the gallery. So, Jeffrey, what prompted your interest in aviation? During the Second World War, when I was a child, living in Nazareth with my mother and my grandparents, my grandfather was an ex-employee of the Handy Page Aircraft Company of UK. He prompted my interest. And how did your love of aviation lead to your friendship with Ron Belling? When I moved from Cape Town, myself and my family in 1975, um, it was only three years later uh, that I began to hear about Ron Belling and the significance of his interest in aviation, which of course uh, lined up with mine. In your opinion, what makes the collection so unique? It covers a subject matter which is not all that well covered in terms of the layman and of course the historical background of Port Elizabeth and the significance of its performance during the Second World War. Can you maybe tell the viewers something about Ron's work that nobody knows about? Ron's wonderfully uh, orchestrated interest in the subject as a child took him down to the airport and uh, there is a painting in the collection depicting his cousins with him and going down and watching all the aircraft movements and of course being able to get closer access to what was going on and also obtaining information. He had a passion for that. It wasn't just a case of just knowing something and finding out but to get access to the information was vital for him. In the complete collection there's 152 paintings and the paintings that were selected today are just a few of those. Is there any specific reason that you chose these paintings to be on display? Well first of all they um, coincide now with the PE 200 years showing Port Elizabeth as it was in the interwar period and of course during the Second World War, giving you an idea of the extent of the metrop metropolitan area and of course its history. Why did Major Alistair Miller land on the PE golf course in this specific painting? Well there was not any other appropriate area for him to land because as you can appreciate golf courses are mowed and um, trimmed and of course it was very much open territory. And we went to the trees there are, that there are now. So as the painting depicts, the very um, layout was perfect. Can you tell us a little bit more about the airplane that flew over St George's Park? The aircraft concerned was um, an aircraft known as a Miles Master. Uh, it was used for training purposes in the South African Air Force during the war. And in this particular instance, it's flying over St George's Park at the time of the celebration of what was known as the Liberty Cavalcade. And of course, the guest of honor was the commander in chief, General Young Christian Smuts, who was also our country's prime minister at the time. How did the Northrop Nomad get to the Donkin Reserve? Well, you can imagine during the war, there was quite a number of instances where there were fundraising exercises. And the Nomad was moved from the aerodrome, from 42 Air School, down to the Duncan, and people 
bought stamps, licked them and attached them to the fuselage. The idea was to cover the entire aircraft with stamps. We're talking about uh, fundraising, uh, union loan certificates, all that type of thing. There's a painting where there's leaflets being dropped over Central Hill. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about why the Harvard was dropping leaflets? In that instance as well, a fundraising exercise. And also to notify the public at large of any developments that were taking place. Ron Belling was very meticulous about his detail on the paintings. Can you give us a little bit background information about the target and the number 128 on the de Havilland that was flying past the city shoreline of Port Elizabeth? Very important indeed. That was um, the South African Air Force uh, with one of the aircraft that was Britain's gift of a, that had a hundred aircraft given by Britain after the First World War and the South African Air Force utilised that to start a mail service and uh, the coastal mail service from Cape Town to Port Elizabeth to East London, Durban and Joburg. So uh, that was an experimental service prior to the founding of uh, South African Airways. Is there a specific reason that Ron paired certain backdrops with specific aeroplanes? Well, in the case of the um, aircraft flying over the seafront of Port Elizabeth, yes. that it was giving emphasis to the experimental uh, postal service. Jeffrey, can you give us a brief overview of a Japanese painting that flew over Port Elizabeth in 1942? It is the only instance of artwork reflecting the Second World War. Uh, as you can see, the pictures are all peaceful, other than the instance of the Glen flying over Port Elizabeth in the early hours of the morning. It, it was launched from a submarine to do reconnaissance flight to see if there were any major capital ships in the harbour because the Japanese had designs on Mozambique. They obviously, with their navy, they needed to know what sort of opposition they were up against. So the reconnaissance of the Glen, the Hashi float plane, was purely to establish what opposition they would be up against should there be offensive action. Do you have a favourite painting and why? 147. The submarine is a is Maria van Riebeck being buzzed by the Piaggio albatross for the simple reason the way he has captured the ocean at night time is absolutely exquisite. It brings the whole scene alive. It just becomes a living thing. Thank you, Jeffrey, for sharing your love and knowledge with us. It was great having you back at the gallery, and I'm sure everyone found that very interesting. First and foremost, it's been a very special privilege for me to be here, and I really do thank uh, you, dear Anna, and uh, GFI for having me. We have prints for sale of the paintings. You can go to our website to inquire if you want to purchase a print. Also go and follow the gallery on our Facebook page and Instagram to get updates of our events and exhibitions. Thank you and please come and visit us at 30 Park Drive, Port Elizabeth, South Africa to see the Ron Belling Aviation Collection on permanent display as well as temporary exhibitions of Port Elizabeth's finest artists.